It's the day before Halloween, and I thought I'd try and squeeze in one last spooky-themed video before the season is officially gone. Like most of you, I'll be spending my Halloween indoors, but I tend to do that kind of already. I prefer, instead of going out and partying, to bask in the ambient glow of the Halloween decorations that I have painstakingly put up, as well as the television as it plays horrible, scary movies while I continuously gorge myself on every single candy I can possibly find within my household until I can no longer fit any more physically into my body. I am clearly already in the spirit of Halloween as I have been for the past two months, with my skeleton shirt and my spooky skeleton socks. But as if I didn't have enough candy and sugar to thoroughly destroy myself with, I figured why not make more, switch it up, and then share it with you. So today I'll be showing you how to make wickedly delicious witch finger cookies that are sure to be the perfect devilish desserts for whatever you plan on brewing up this Halloween. These recipes are fairly simple in construction and require minimal-ish ingredients that are easily picked up at your local store and can be picked up ahead of time or on the spooky day itself. So let me share some frightfully delicious treats with you that are sure to make you scream with joy. So let's get to the kitchen and start cooking so we can sit back, relax, eat, drink, and be scary and have an unbelievable Halloween. For this recipe, you're going to need two sticks of butter at room temperature, one cup of powdered sugar, one large egg, a teaspoon of vanilla extract, you can also add one teaspoon of almond extract if you'd like, two and two thirds cups of flour, a teaspoon of salt, a handful of raw almonds, and a jam or preserve of your choice. I usually go with raspberry or strawberry because they look the most like blood, but you can use whatever you'd like. First, I cream together the softened butter, powdered sugar, egg, and the extracts together in a large bowl. I like to start out using a whisk and then blending it with a spatula. Once it's all blended, set it aside and in a separate bowl, whisk or stir your flour and salt. Next, gradually add the flour and salt mixture to the creamed mixture, stirring after each addition. It should reach a consistency like this. Make sure there are no clumps of flour. Once that's done, you can roll it into a ball and wrap it in cling wrap, or you can roll it out between two sheets of cling wrap and put it in the refrigerator. Depending on how cold your fridge is, you might wanna pop it in the freezer instead. We want the dough cold so the butter can harden, which will prevent spreading in the oven and will make the dough easier to mold into our finger shapes. I put mine in the fridge for 30 minutes initially, but I felt like it wasn't cold enough after I took it out, so I put it back in to the freezer for about 10 minutes until it felt hard to the touch. While your dough is in the fridge and or freezer, preheat the oven to 325 degrees Fahrenheit. Next, take out a baking sheet and cover it with some parchment paper or a Silpat baking mat. Next, we slice the almonds, which will be the fingernails. Make sure to be really careful with this and that you're using a sharp knife and just really take your time. I like to take an almond between two fingers and gently make a slit with the knife. And then I place that almond onto the cutting board and drive the knife through the rest of the slit that I made while being mindful of my fingers. So it should come off into two halves and each of those will be a fingernail. Once that's done, it's time to take our dough out and make some fingers. Cut the dough into thirds, take one third and put the rest of the dough back into the fridge. Working with a third of the dough at a time, you'll want to heat it up a bit by working it in your hands and forming it into a disc. Set it down onto a lightly floured surface and then you can slice it into strips. Once you have the strips, just play around. I like to roll mine between my hands and on the cutting board. Once I've got it to the rough size I want, I push down lightly on one end where the fingernail will go. I then go down the length of the finger, squeezing to make two hourglass shapes. The areas between where I've squeezed will be the knuckles. I take my knife and make shallow small cuts to look like wrinkles of the knuckles. Once that's done, I push an almond slice slightly into the dough so it sticks and sets. And then I set it aside.
Continue this till you have all the fingers you want. I had some extra dough left over, so I cut out some cookies with some Halloween cookie cutters I had laying around. Don't worry about having your fingers be perfect, it's just supposed to be fun and make them as spooky and gnarly looking as you want. When you're done with one set of dough, stick it back into the fridge while you work with the other sections of dough. Once they're all done, put it up on a prepared baking sheet and put it in the oven to bake for 20 to 25 minutes. Depending on how thick you made them, it might take a little bit longer. I think mine actually took around 30 minutes before they were done. If you're not sure how long yours will take, just check on them after 25 minutes and see if they're golden brown. If not, then be sure to add more time in about two to five minute increments until they are perfectly golden brown. While they bake, I take some jam and heat it up in the microwave for about 15 seconds to make it easier to put on the cookie. Once the cookies are golden brown, take them out of the oven and let them cool for around three minutes. And then you can start carefully taking off the almond slices and putting some jam into the nail bed then pressing the almond back on so it's secure, and if you want to add some extra spookiness, push it down a bit so the blood oozes out around the fingernail. If you want to go to the next level of spookiness, you can take the other end of the finger and dip it into the jam so it looks like it was cut fresh from the hand. You are now perfectly prepared for any devilish dinner or terrifying tea party that you plan on attending this Halloween, or whatever you plan on brewing up this season. These witches' fingers make the perfect addition to any cup of tea or coffee. It's sure to be the spookiest way to start off any Halloween morning. so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I know I had a lot of fun making it and I finally fulfilled my promise of showing some spooky baking items. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know in the comments below. If you also have any baking or troubleshooting needs, please also comment because we've all been there and it's always nice to get some help when you need it most. With that, I hope this has thoroughly gotten you into the spooky Halloween spirit. Wear your spookiest shirt and of course your spookiest socks to celebrate. And with that, I hope you all have a wonderfully spooky and sugar-filled Halloween.